As academic registrar, it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you all to Chelmsford Cathedral for this morning's Anglia Ruskin graduation ceremony, where we will celebrate the success of the class of 2017. The tradition of graduation ceremonies dates back to the 15th century, and it is a tradition that has evolved since. Roughly translated, graduation means taking a step, and graduation symbolizes the move of the former student, now called a graduand, into a new role in society as a graduate, where they will use the skills and talents developed during their studies to contribute to the future advancement of society. Each graduand will cross the stage and shake hands with the Vice-Chancellor to signal their transition to this new role, and we will applaud them for their success so far and in anticipation of their contribution to society in the future. At the end of the ceremony, the Vice-Chancellor will formally admit all new graduates to the community of scholars, and as new members of that community, as the academic procession leaves the stage, the new graduates will join the procession, and that will bring the ceremony to a close. It's almost time for us to begin our formal proceedings, so I hereby declare the ceremony to be in session, and I call upon the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Ian Martin, to address you all. Vice-Chancellor. Graduands, family, friends, colleagues, as Vice-Chancellor of Anglia Ruskin University, it is my very great pleasure to be here today at this Your Graduation Ceremony. Firstly, our heartfelt congratulations to each of you on reaching this really important milestone. Today is a chance to not only celebrate your graduation, but also to take stock and look forward to wherever your multiple careers will take you into the future. Wherever that journey takes you, enjoy it. Embrace change in advance, Make sure you challenge, provoke, look for new ideas that will make a difference. But above all, don't be so proud as to not recognize the inevitability of that change and how it will challenge you in your career and those who work around you. To quote Albert Einstein, whoever undertakes to set himself up as judge of truth and knowledge is shipwrecked by the laughter of the gods. We will have partially succeeded in our task if we've given you the skills and confidence to influence and lead the change that will make a real difference to the communities you live in and work with. This year marks our 25th anniversary of receiving university status. On the 16th of June, 1992, we became a university, a milestone in a history that started in 1858 with John Ruskin's inaugural address at the opening of the Cambridge School of Art, the first part of what is now Anglia Ruskin University. The power of education, the importance of providing access to that education and innovation were part of our institutional DNA from that day forwards. Our new strategy, Designing a Future, was launched this year and outlines our continuing focus on transforming lives through innovative, inclusive, and entrepreneurial education and research. Over those past 25 years, more than 140,000 students have taken the steps that you're about to take and have graduated from a higher education qualification at Anglia Ruskin. They've studied courses ranging from architecture to zoology and an awful lot in between. And for each one of those last 25 years, the university's seen major change and development, and this year, is absolutely no exception. We were delighted to have maintained our position in the top 350 of world universities. You might say, well, 350 doesn't sound too impressive, but there are 20,000, it sounds better. Indeed, we are the highest ranked of all the new UK modern universities. Whilst there is so, so much more to a university education than simply securing a well-paid job, we were pleased to see that The Economist ranked ARU as one of the top 50 universities in the country for delivering a positive financial return for their students. Continue our success in the areas of enterprise and entrepreneurship. We won the Duke of York Award for University Entrepreneurship at the Lloyds Bank National Business Awards. Alongside our achievements, we've continued to invest in facilities. 
Our wonderful new science building in Cambridge is nearing completion. And as when, when you wander back down to the main campus, you'll see our new medical school arising from the ground. Alongside our education, academics from all our faculties have carried out important research that looks into pressing issues for the UK and further afield. The research highlights this year include work on blindness and vision research, mental health, aging, law, finance, business, engineering, amongst many other areas. And of course, we're amazingly proud of the achievements of our students. Relevant to this faculty, this summer Molly Smith was named Student Paramedic of Year by the College of Paramedics. We've had many other students across the university achieving national recognition, a testament to the strength and qualities of our student body. As a university, we define our success by the positive impact we have on the lives of students and communities. For us to succeed, we need your ongoing support and engagement if we are to fully deliver on our potential. That support, I know, will take many forms. We here on the stage can strengthen our university, but without ongoing engagement from our alumni and friends, we won't be able to deliver on the full potential we have. It really matters, that support. It helps us add value to the education we provide. It supports our researchers push boundaries and gives us the opportunity to carry out a wide range of activities that support the cultural, social and economic well-being of our host cities in the wider region. It's one key part enabling us to translate our design and intention into the reality of helping to transform lives. You have our absolute commitment to ensuring that what we do makes a real difference to our students, both current and future, and the communities we live in and serve. Before I close, I have to make special mention of your family, friends, and supporters in the audience today. We know that they provided you with critical support during your educational journey. That support has taken many forms, moral, spiritual, friendship, nutritional, and all too often financial. And on behalf of all of us, can we extend our thanks to you for the support you've given our graduates. I also want to acknowledge and thank the staff across ARU and the faculty who've contributed so much to your educational experience. Thank you. I also want to acknowledge the governing board whose wisdom and guidance helped shape our university. Wherever your ARU degree takes you, I hope that you do continue a relationship with this university. It is your university. And whether you like it or not, our success and your success are now inextricably linked. In finishing, I return to John Ruskin and his guidance on the use of words. Say all you have in the fewest possible, or your reader will certainly skip them, and in the plainest possible, or he will certainly misunderstand them. I hope I've not breached any of those mandates from our founder. Once again, congratulations. Have a wonderful day, fantastic careers, ARU would not be where it is today without you. Well done. Vice-Chancellor, thank you. We now come to the formal presentation to the Vice-Chancellor of those receiving awards today. And I call upon Interim Dean of Faculty, Professor James Hampton Till, to come to the podium to present to the Vice-Chancellor graduates from the Faculty of Medical Science. Professor Hampton Till. Vice-Chancellor, it is my pleasure to present to you graduates from the Faculty of Medical Science for the award of Foundation Degree in the Sciences, Decontamination Sciences, and Jeska Swakowska. <laughs> for the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Decontamination Sciences, Jakob Sizak. <laughs> For the award of Foundation Degree in the Sciences, Health and Social Care, Kelly Coppin.
Patricia Sophia Coppin. Joanne Devine. Lisa Grick. Naza Erin Mapag. Nicola Jane McLean. Louise Neofitu. Simin Sola Omobalanli Olatunji. Shamira Ramjourney. James Rushbrook. Gemma Sapsford. Adam James Smith. Rebecca Louise Trussler. Ginny Mae Wilson. Shelley Louise Wilson. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Health and Social Care, Melanie Beaton. Grace Ogundeli. Joanne Topliff. Jacqueline Chibwabwa. For the award of Bachelor of Science Public Health, Tacey Adams. Felistus Tatenda Chirikuri. Denise Esther Makashi Tetila. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours, Public Health, Michael Adjibodi. Hannah Tosin Ali. Zainab Amara. Odil Amvuna. Franklin Banda. Pooja Budia. Marjorie Chakawata. Lavetta Dubaconte. Tracy Differ. Vanda Marina Duarte. Tracy Dwamena. Etta Nsemki. Dane Lee Goodyear Bennett. Sophie Griffiths. Mona Lisa Sakheni Klongwani. Well 
Fatima Kamara. Mabinti Kamara. Sophie Mimazet Kumisi Rosie. Glory Emba Mayang. Deo Mead. Gifty Afriyi Mensa. Omolayo Morakinho. Kudzai Lennon Magano. Marianne and Jerry and Jirogi. Esther Uche Owari. Osinachi Emmanuel Ogbuji. Oluwashia Omoteo Oloran Femi. Annabelle Omololu. Urena Oparaucha. Vida Osai. Vivian Osei. <laughs> Diane Misamu Sentime. <laughs> Modina Shokai. <laughs> Christy Smith's a dog room. Ladun Favor Satonwa. Titilola van Malayo Satonwa. Nikki Tapna. Amy Louise Taylor. Zoe Yunanka. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, that partially completes the list of graduands for me to present to you today. You. Professor Hampton Till, thank you. We have many distinguished academic staff at Anglia Ruskin University. And I should now like to ask one of them, Dr. Fiona McMaster, to come to the podium to offer a few words of reflection. Dr. McMaster. Thank you. Good morning, graduates. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, colleagues. It is my great pleasure to congratulate all of you on your academic achievements that have brought you to this celebration with your family and friends today. Your individual journey to graduation is unique. Many of you have faced challenges of loss, of health, and of juggling family responsibilities to enable your education. At the same time, you've become a part of our community here at Anglia Ruskin University, and it's, as you can see, an increasingly global community. You have a shared experience with your classmates. You've worked late at night on projects and assignments, and have been challenged to expand your understanding and your skills. I have seen you grow through your courses, developing the language of professional practice,
thinking critically and creatively to communicate those skills to your patients, to your colleagues, and to members of your communities. Through your personal challenges, you have persevered, and by being here today, you show the determination and grit that's needed to excel in your careers. This determination and grit has long been a foundation of medical sciences. Questioning the norms and challenging authority has led to leaps in our understanding of wellness, disease, and inequalities in health. In 1854, in Soho, not far from Leicester Square, as it is today, a physician noticed a cluster of people sick with cholera. At that time, cholera was common in the UK, and there were outbreaks in most cities, especially those with rivers. But the prevailing wisdom about cholera was that it was caused by a miasma, or bad air. But the physician in our story, he questioned this hypothesis. He thought that the transmission of disease must be due to the contamination, contaminated water. During the outbreak, he plotted the locations of those who became sick, and through his determination, he persuaded the authorities to remove the handle of the water pump that he believed was the source of infection. And it was, although that only became clear later uh, on. This story is familiar to many of you. Of course, the physician was Jon Snow. The original Jon Snow, that is, not the uh, political journalist nor the fictional king in the north. Um, the Jon Snow who is really considered to be the father of epidemiology. He asked questions, he collected data, and he persevered, as you have done. In fact, five years before his outbreak in London, Jon Snow wrote about his hypothesis. He said, in 1849, this is so five years before the outbreak, he said, the belief in the communication of cholera is a much less dreary one than the reverse. For what is so dismal as the idea of some invisible agent pervading the atmosphere and spreading over the world? If my opinions are correct, cholera might be checked and kept at bay by simple measures that would not interfere with social or commercial intercourse, and the enemy would be shorn of his chief terrors. I don't think we're allowed to write like that in uh, research anymore, but this was how he, he, he phrased it. It would only be necessary for all persons attending or waiting on the patient to wash their hands carefully and frequently, never omitting to do so before touching food, and for everybody to avoid drinking water into which drains and sewers empty themselves. This sounds very close to the advice that the WHO has been given in recent outbreaks, not just of cholera, but of Ebola and other emerging diseases. This determination and confidence uh, in what it probably started very young for Jon Snow. Like many of you, he was the first in his family to go to university. In fact, he was one of nine children, and he came from a family where laboring would have been the natural job for him. With his curiosity and his ability with science, he became a pioneer, not only in epidemiology, but in the broader medical sciences too. So this happened over 150 years ago, but we still use some of the techniques that he developed to find out about epidemics and how they spread. Despite the current tensions that we have in global politics, there is room and there is chance for cooperation. Just this week, the WHO has reminded us uh, that the obesity crisis continues, and we are constantly reminded in the media of the pockets of deprivation and inequality that you all are going to be working hard to improve as clinicians, practitioners, educators, and researchers. We all want health for ourselves and our loved ones, and when our health fails, we want the most compassionate and highly skilled practitioners to assist us. With the advances we have in technology, medical science is changing rapidly, and showing many new opportunities for all of you as you embark on your careers. You all have a role to play in this bright future for medical science. As Anglia Ruskin graduates, your role is to question, to discover, and to hold on to the passion and the curiosity that I have seen all of you apply in your essays and your presentations. I feel sure that you will use this passion to reduce inequalities 
and ensure the very best care is available to everyone in our communities. Thank you. Dr. McMaster, thank you. We now continue with the presentation to the Vice-Chancellor of those receiving awards today. So I call upon Interim Dean of Faculty, Professor James Hampton Till, to return to the podium to continue with the presentation of graduates from the Faculty of Medical Science. Professor Hampton Till. Vice-Chancellor, it is my pleasure to continue the presentation of graduates from the Faculty of Medical Science. For the award of Master of Science, Public Health, Aliyu Abubakar. <laughs> Farhad Ali. <laughs> Easy Buigwi Agbifor Amadi. <laughs> Anthony Chima Chugwuma Anazir. Joshua Chigaze Chibuiza. <laughs> Mike Cure Chimney. <laughs> Naomi Churambu. <laughs> Olusagun Dairo. Josephine Gifty Decora. <laughs> Basisiwi Clamini. <laughs> Melody Beatrice Emma Egba. <laughs> Ajoki Monsieurat Fateo. Shari Leah Jafet. Mudet Celia Lairs. Chioma Cynthia Okorowigwe. Olisugun Olani Pakun. <laughs> 